I've been doing my usual staring at this and thinking about how to create the darks in this fabric. Um, and I've decided to scare myself and do it in layers. Um, I did a little experiment using cobalt blue and quinacridone rose. So I've got a almost rose turning into a purple, turning into a blue through here. And then I put a layer of uh, burnt sienna on top of it here. And I put a layer of um, uh, French, French ochre on it over here. And I'm actually really liking the dark colors that are being created there. Uh, if we pull in here and sort of look at what's here, we can see that it's similar to the color that's of that fabric. And I'm thinking I want to lean this fabric just a little bit more yellow than what it is. And so that was one reason to use the French ochre. But I can also use some burnt sienna to get some of the darker areas. So if we remember our this whole thing of layers, the last layer we put on is going to be the dominant layer. So if I put in the cools in underneath of here, and um, it, this side of here looks a little warmer uh, darks to me, and this looks a little grayer. And so if I start over here with more of a purpley uh, tone, and then work my way into more of a blue tone for my first layer, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get what I need here. The other thing on fabric that I'm going to need to be looking at is the fact that when you have fabric fold, if there's what I call a canyon behind it, so right here it's folded and there's a deep place right be back behind there. If there's a canyon behind it, you have a hard line. And I also have a little bit of light right on that edge. And then it's dark here at the top and then it's light as it drops down in here. But now if you have a rolling hill, you have a gradual run from light to dark. And then we have another canyon there, so it's deep back behind here. We have a hard edge there. We have a hard edge right here as this rolls because that's deep back behind there. There's another hard edge here. And then this is a gradual going up from light to dark or from dark up into light because it's lighter right on that edge. And our light's coming in from the left here. And so we have this highlight here. This is in shadow because it's behind the light. But the light is bounced over that and hit here. Uh, lights hit into there. There's more light hitting up here than there is down in there. So these are things that I'm going to have to just keep on looking at as I, um, as I do this. And so it's a little bit scary to do it in blue first, blue purple, um, because but I still have to do the same thing. Hard edges, gradual run, hard edges, gradual run, and leave a little more white than I might if I was doing it with a, a regular colors. So uh, because I want these to be a little more of that yellowy tone when it gets up into here onto these spaces, and I don't necessarily want any blue in underneath of there. I'm going to leave this pure white to start with a little bit graded down in there. There's actually some bounces of blue that I see in here. So having a little tiny bit of blue there might be just sweet. Uh, so anyway, we'll try this. Nothing like trying something and failing right in front of all of you guys. Uh, but we will go for that. The other thing, values values, values, values. Uh, I will have to do some more on this label because the value between that blue bottle. Uh, yeah, so the label is about value 8, and the bottle, of course, is value 10. And so right now, we are nowhere near dark enough. That's not at value 8. So that's going to have to go much, much darker, uh, but still stay light on that light side. Uh, so that's the things to be thinking about. Uh, Let's see what we can do about diving in here. And how big of a brush am I going to want to work with? You know my thing. As big a brush as you can handle, Margaret. Let's go ahead and start with the big brush. So I'm using cobalt blue rather than ultramarine blue so I don't get too dark with it. Um, I don't want it overpowering. So I've got cobalt blue there. 
There was a little bit of yellow in the pan here. It's making gray. Um, let me just get that wiped out so that I can make a purple up there. Quinn Rose and Cobalt Blue to make a purple. Okay, so these are these are my two colors. And if I need to, I can add even a little more Quinn Rose. And I think I'm actually going to a little more Quinn Rose. So that's really a very rosy color. Uh, and then the uh, the uh, Cobalt Blue. So that's what I'm going to do my under layer with. And then when I do that upper layer, I can darken things even a little bit more. So we're going to be starting with that purple over here. And I need to think a little bit about how it's lighter and darker and where the gradations are. So it comes down to here. Just go ahead and, and then maybe a little more blue right in there. And as it comes across here, we're going to be grading this. So I need to sort of find where this solid part is. And then do a grade. And then it's going to come hard into this edge right here. And yeah, there's a darker area there. Let me dry this just a little bit, clean it up just a little, because I now need to soften this edge. So this has to soften right up to about here. And it's soft across the top of this, just underneath of the, okay. And then I'm going to have to put just a little more purple in here because this has now maybe gotten that a little too much. Okay. And then rinse this again, soften this edge again. And we'll come up to about there. And then it's going to go darker. Let's see, we've got an almost white. Keep that dry right there. Let me put this a little closer here. You guys can then see it too. And this is going to soften out into here, soften out into here. A little darker as it comes around that corner little darker in there. It's a darkish spot right there and darker up on that corner. Now, it feels like it should go a little more bluish out in here. Right up and under that bottle. Soften this edge, a darker blue right in there. And there's another little crease up here. Okay, and then up in here. It's this area changes uh, angle, and so we've got a little darker there where it's very light on that whole edge. And stay out of there. Stay out of there, my dear. Um, 
it's going to go a little darker and um, I would say a little more toward the blue um, as we get to the top of this ridge. Hard line right there. Hard line here. And then it's going to get graded going to get graded here on this side and a little bit on the other side and graded out here. And what do I see? There's a little lighter space right there. Oh, Margaret, you should never have to come back in here with more dark here. It needs to go a little darker anyway. And there's actually a little plain change. So let's just bring this with a little more of the blue in it. Rinse my brush a little bit, dry it, come in and pick up the edge of this and pull it over. None of this is as white as what we have. Um, that's got to be soft right there. This has to be light, but it's not going to be uh, as white as my white area. Other color on top. Um, it has a little bit of orange to it, but not a huge amount. And so it may turn sort of greenish if I'm not careful. Just wondering if I've gotten too dark with this. It needs to be pretty dark over there. And then this is a gradual graded edge. Okay, I gotta find out whether I totally screwed this up or not. Uh, it will be different, let's just put it that way. Uh, but see whether this whole process of layering, which is uh, something a little bit new to me, I haven't done a whole lot of it, uh, but the idea that whatever your last layer is, especially if you put it on pretty thick, um, will be the dominant layer so that you can actually do a cool underwash to throw in the shadows 
of the opposite color um, and get a beautiful finish on this. And I'll, you know what I need here before I can start this? I've got to get my photograph over here. Uh, the photograph is such a guide to what's going to be happening here that I really need to have that close by. Um, so this is uh, French ochre that I'm mixing up. And uh, I'm going to put it on a little bit grated. This is still going to stay white or a very, very thin layer of it. Uh, and there's going to be some whiter areas here. It's almost white there. Uh, so let's start with it a little thinner over here so that I can be a little thinner up on this edge. And this is going to come up, find its way around the base of that face. And now I can put this on thicker. And hopefully, when we're done, we'll be happy with it. Sort of scary to do it this way. Oh, I'm still a little bit damp there from that lifting that I did. Well, hopefully we're not going to have a problem. The most that'll happen is that the colors will mix a little bit. Maybe that'll help smooth that out a little too. I'm going to mix even more of this because it's going pretty fast. And up to right about there, and then it softens out. The rest of this has all got quite a bit of color to it. Let me thin that little bit there. Let me get my rag. I'm going to just soften this little edge right there, because that's going to just go into the white. So if I just work my way across, then I'm not going to be... One of the things that happened on the first layer is that I was working with my big brush, which I like to do, but it was throwing a little extra uneven water paint mixture down, and I ended up with some fairly uneven painted areas, uh, which I came back and tried to fix a little bit, and I'm not sure if I just made them worse or if I made them better. But I'm, I'm liking that. That's interesting. That's, that's nice. And let's just throw a little bit, let's see if I can get some just nice thick paint here. Oops, brush dropped down on me. A little thicker paint right there. Let's just go even a little thicker with that paint. Very nice. And a little thicker with the paint right there. Okay. Gotta get moving on this before this starts drying unevenly on me as well.
And now let me lift this just a little lighter in a couple of spots. I want to do it relatively dry brush so that I'm not introducing a lot of water. And just keep this sort of soft looking. This is actually pretty dark back in here. I don't think I have to maybe just lift a little tiny bit here on this edge. Oh yeah, just a little lift in there uh, gets this a little brighter feeling. But notice how, you know, I just painted in over the top of this all my hard lines from that shadow area stayed very nicely underneath of here. And the, we're going to have some reflection bits. I could put a little bit of this in here. Comes out to there, OK. And then I need to soften that bottom edge of that. The top comes right up onto the rim and doesn't. But this bottom comes and wraps down in here. And then there's a little bit of blue, a little darker space right in here. And I will be putting another color on top of this so this will not be blue. Um, we'll end up with that purpley tan combo. And then this has to be soft at the bottom of that. Just soft, soft, soft. And these edges sort of are somewhat soft, somewhat hard. And it's going to be light here right on the very edge, so let me just get that lifted off of there. There's a darker space that comes right in through here. It's going to join out into some things that are happening back into both of those spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop with it right there. I really didn't like how the uh, cloth came out with that um, uh, French ochre um, on there pretty thick. It made the whole cloth just look heavy uh, and dirty. So I ended up doing a lift. I didn't lift it all out. Um, I actually I like what happened with leaving a little bit of this blue showing through. This purple ended up looking like a big bruise here. And I decided rather than having such a large dark area that I would actually split it and make another crease in the fabric. So now I need to come back in and put a little bit of dark in on top of here. And um, I think I'm going to use a mixture of this French ochre and burnt sienna to make it a little bit darker so I don't have to make it quite so thick. Ooh, I wonder. I'm going to try that. Just a wee touch of quinacridone gold in there. Hmm. Of course, it's going to introduce another color. So it's the burnt sienna, actually. Burnt sienna is what I have in the background. OK, so now, uh, to make these folds, if I want to have a graded, if I want it to look rounded, I just have a grade from dark to light. And if I want to make it so it's a, a big, deep fold like here, I have a hard line with a dark edge back behind it. And so um, this should be a gradual off of the a corner here, and I'm going to have it gradual into this other highlight area. Let me just put my little bit darker pieces in, and they're going to come and stop right there. So yeah, I like that. I think that color is going to work. 
Now that I've got that dark in, let's get the grade put. I just was brushing it a little too much yesterday. So then I'm going to grade that down and then grade this other side. Let's my brush again, dry it again, and pick up these edges with a damp brush, not a wet brush, but a damp brush. And bring that just to the edge of there. Okay. And then it should be a little bit darker right here. So let's just add a little more dark on that edge. And dark right up to the edge of this um, fold in the fabric. Now this side, okay, I'm going to just grade it a little bit. Okay. And then let's go a little bit darker right in here. This works. I was so sure I had the right formula yesterday. Well, it, it had worked on my um, little sample, but in retrospect, I didn't put it real thick on that sample, and it did better not being super thick. And then let's just, I'm going to put a little Quin Gold right in on this top of that. this be a hard line right here. Rinse my brush, dry it halfway. If I don't rinse the brush in between each time, there's still the paint left from the other, and pretty soon I'm not really grading this. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I think that that's going to be better. Um, now, one other little thing that I could do right now 
Uh, but I need a smaller brush to do it. And do a little bit of this work on the bottle. Seeing sort of a reddish purple and a blue. We don't want too much here, but enough to give this feeling of the... Um, is that going to be too dark? There's that blue ribbon that wraps across and through this behind there. Comes back out this other side. Goes back behind again. Goes out this other side. Lettering down in here. I think that's more than enough on that bottle. Okay. I think it's time for me to stop for now. And um, we will re-adjourn with this. later. That looks better than it did. Uh, and you don't get the feeling of the folds coming in there. Just enough detail on this bottle that it feels like there's something in there. Uh, I might still have to put one more layer of darker on there uh, because the value difference is still just a little bit more than what it should be. I came in and did a layer of blue on there, by the way. Uh, and I could come in and do a layer of brown. Yeah. We really wanted to be up to, yes, almost that value. I'll let it dry and then I'll put a layer of brown in on top of there to make that just a little bit darker, um, that beigey brown.